But what do mortals see of the eternity chased after by their god? Many of you may be aware of the upcoming character known as Kamisatu Ayaka. Ayaku is from the upcoming region of Inazuma, and she's the princess of the Kamisato house. She passes her time practicing swordsmanship, slicing the falling snowflakes on a snowy day, which is fitting since her vision is of cryo. For me, she is on my list of most anticipated. Her combat style appears to take heavy influence from Virgil from the Devil May Cry series, featuring extremely quick successive strikes partnered with drawing and stowing her blade. Perfect for cutting snowflakes. We unfortunately do not have masses of information on her, despite her being known about for a while now. She has been shown in Mondstadt in some trailers. Maybe this suggests she will come to Mondstadt and be a means of reaching Inazuma. I personally believe they planned on adding her much earlier, but as time has gone on, their plans have changed for her, and we will see her when we arrive at Inazuma instead. So what do we know about Ayaka? All we really have to go by are in-game voice lines. So to start off, I'll cover some of the small details before we move on to the more important things. We know she likes green tea, as she uses it as a metaphor a few times for her main passion of swordsmanship. We also know she passes the time by appreciating the arts, music, song, poetry and dancing, as well as playing Go. This implies she lives a life filled with leisure and that her house is quite prestigious. Toma, my umbrella at once! Oh, uh, my apologies. Toma is suggested to be her fiancé. He's mentioned multiple times in voice lines and appears to aid her in her duties. But the way she speaks to him here makes him sound more like a servant than a fiancé. I believe the intent is to show she's used to ordering people around, so much that it's slipped out here. My house's name in full is Inazuma Bakufu Shabugyo Kamisato. Quite the mouthful, yes. But don't worry, you don't need to understand it. Just know that it means Kamisato is the most illustrious house in all of Inazuma. When I said you didn't need to understand what Inazuma Bakufu Shabugyo Kamisato means, I meant that you can relax. You are a traveler from afar, an honored guest of the Kamisato house. She has a brother who she looks up to, but also tends to worry about. He appears to hold a position of great importance. If he is her older brother or younger brother, this is unclear, but his name is Ayato. The load my brother bears is indeed great. What is it that I can offer to the Kamisato house? Swordsmanship? Artistry? Or something even more powerful? If my brother were to fall, then I would ascend the role of Shabugyo. <sighs> if you see him, remind him to take care of himself for his sister's sake. This title has came up a few times now, Shabugyo. Due to there being no transcripts for these voice lines, I had to try and work this one out. I believe the title consists of two words, Sha and Bugyo, as these two words make the most sense in context. A Bugyo is approximately a commissioner, governor or magistrate. The word is often tied with a prefix to determine what it is they are governing. This can range from an actual office, such as one that deals with trade and foreign relations, to just the name of a location. As for the prefix, I believe it is the word Sha, which is one of many names that is associated with Shinto shrines. This would make sense in context of the future voice lines we will cover, as it appears the Kamisato house has deep affiliation with the shrine and its festivities. So the role of the Shabugyo would appear to be governing the shrine and the festivities surrounding them. With regards to a character known as Yoimiya, Ayaka supplies more information about these duties. Organizing festivals and ceremonies is the responsibility of the Shabugyo and the shrine maidens, and our handler of fireworks really knows how to build an exhilarating atmosphere. Although this summer, I've decided not to ask her to oversee the fireworks because... I don't want Toma having to apologize to the firefighting teams again. The Kamisato house seems to hold great importance. This could maybe explain why she's in possession of a vision still, as it is known that the Electro Archon has been orchestrating the Vision Hunt Decree, where she's seizing visions within the borders of Inazuma and laying them into the hands of the statue of a thousand-armed, hundred-eyes guard. 
if this is the case, it would make sense that many of the characters Ayaka mentions in her voice lines also possess visions. There is also a pattern where characters' voice lines that directly reference another often become playable. It would seem that these festivities are of great importance to the Electro Archon, as it seems the people involved are immune to the decree. Do you wish to learn more about the Raiden Gokuden? <laughs> or to put it more simply, do you want a post in the Kamisato house? I trust a salary of 30,000 would be to your satisfaction. We know the Electro Archon's local name is the Raiden Shogun. This could mean there is a direct tie between the Kamisato house and the Archon. Maybe they serve under her. Gokuden translates to five traditions or five schools. In the real world, this is associated with the appreciation of the sword. The schools are Yamato, Yamashiro, Baizen, Shoshu or Sagami, and Mino. I'm not sure if the Raiden Gokuden is a reference to these schools or if it's actually the name given to five houses, Kamisato being one of them. This would make sense since working for her house is a good way to learn about the Raiden Gokuden. The house may also be tied to the sword as Ayaka appears to have appreciation for it. I don't think there's much else to say about Ayaka, but there is one big thing we do learn in her voice lines that has a lot of people excited. Ah, you want to learn about the great shrine maiden herself? <laughs> I have a better idea. Why not come and work for me? The only problem is, the compensation my brother can offer you may not be at the level you are accustomed to. Who is the great shrine maiden she speaks about? Well, it isn't clear, but I believe there is a high chance that she's somebody she mentions in another voice line. I'm not even sure exactly what Yai's role is myself, but one would assume she is a high Nishikuchi. I greatly enjoy working with her. Organizing festival affairs generally takes a lot of effort and doesn't generate much income, but Yai's events always come off both elegant and profitable. Yai Sakura, Sakura meaning cherry blossom. Yai has a few meanings, but I think the closest one that would make sense to the character described is blessed. The other key word in the quote is Mishikushi. Once again, without transcripts, I'm not entirely sure that this is correct, but I believe the word is as follows. And this also makes the most sense in context. And Mishikushi is the deity or spirit featured in religious rites associated with a shrine. They would be summoned by one of the high-ranking priests. Now with what little information we have, it's unclear if the use of the word is to suggest that Yai is a deity. Or if Mishikushi is some kind of unique being to the Inazuma Mythos, similar to that of the Adepti. There is the possibility our Electro Archon, dare I say it, isn't Raiden Mei at all, and her identity is Yai Sakura instead. But I personally believe she will be the great shrine maiden Ayaka spoke of previous. Many may already be familiar with the name Yai Sakura. That is because Yai Sakura exists in Mihoyo's other game, Honkai Impact. Yai Sakura's Honkai depiction is of Amiko. Amiko is essentially a Shinto shrine maiden, which again ties into the theme surrounding the Kamisato house heavily hinting that Yai Sakura is once again a Shrine Maiden in her Genshin Impact depiction. Sakura's story is a tragic one. She lived under a patriarchal society and her actions were often dictated to her. She had a younger sister, Yai Rin, who was sick from an early childhood. This sickness was considered a sign of great hidden power. Around their village, Honkai were manifesting in the surrounding forest due to the lack of rainfall. The villagers believed that sacrifices being made would solve the problem, and their previous sacrifice was not sufficient. They decided that Yairin would be selected for the next sacrifice, and Sakura was chosen to preside over that sacrifice. During the ritual, Sakura dropped the blade and attempted to escape with her sister, to discover she was unable to run due to a cut hamstring. The Yai chief took her hand with a knife and completed the sacrifice. At that moment, the rain fell from the sky. 
緒に桜を見に行く約束もう守れないみたいにお姉ちゃんは立派な巫女さんになってみんなを守ってハディスペアグルー A great darkness in her heart, a hatred the Honkai preyed upon. Sakura distanced herself from the rest of the village and honed her swordsmanship. She remained kind and gentle, but her grief still stirred within her as four years passed. One day, Sakura found a girl exhausted and unwell by the riverside dressed in western attire. <laughs> Her name was Kalan Kaslana. Sakura bought her somewhere safe to recover. Alongside her was a purple box containing the core of the 12th Hersher. During this time, the Honkai beast appeared once again, and Sakura was asked to go and protect the village. Upon Kalan's awakening, she rushed out to aid Sakura, saving her and slaying the beasts. After that, Kalen vowed to protect Sakura and the villagers. Sakura's feelings for Kalen grew until eventually she fell for her. The Honkai attacks continued until the villagers proposed another sacrifice to quell them once again. When Kalen got wind of the news, she recalled Sakura's story of her younger sister. She rushed out to prevent the ritual because she knew more innocent girls would die. Upon arrival, stood before her was the fox. Kalen launched an attack. The fox was a result of the Honkai tricking Sakura, preying on her despair. Sakura had stabbed herself with her katana that the 12th core had fused itself into. This released the Honkai inside her, making her its puppet.全員道連れにしてやる。これを果たしたら、凛のもとへ行くぞ。たとえそれが天国だろうと地獄だろうと必ずいいね。僕は箱に封印された箱の中で外のことも時間の流れもわからないまま憎しみだけが増していった。そう
written in a lovely hand. I'm sorry, I departed under the cover of the fireworks. We will likely never meet again. Take care of yourself. Many of the themes in this description seem to line up with Sakura. Reference to the deity in the form of the Michikuchi. Reference to the fox and transforming into the fox, which are very similar to her story in Honkai. And the note left on the back of the mask, maybe suggesting her role in the festivities is to remain undercover, hiding in plain sight from the Shogun. You 